This video is part one of the series that goes along with this book that I wrote about Newfoundland and is available at Amazon. Well, it's day one of St. Augustine to Maine, and I've just cut the engine off. We're motoring for the first nine hours, uh, but now we've got uh, eight knots on the beam, and it's just gorgeous, beautiful, easy, light wind sailing conditions out here today. Let's take a look around. Is this nice the whole way? I will be a happy sailor. I'm sure things are going to change though. All right, peace. Well, here we are at the sunset of the first night on my uh, trip to Canada. Uh, it's really pleasant out here right now, just like eight knots of wind, and we're sailing along at like four and a half, maybe five knots. We're probably already picking up a little bit in the current from the Gulf Stream, although we're not there yet. Uh, I had a motor the first nine hours of the day, so that's always kind of a drag, but at least it wasn't, uh, it wasn't rough. And easy, easy cruising. And uh, right now it's just very pleasant beam reach, uh, eight knots of wind, like I said, just easy sailing. Uh, so this keeps up, I'll be really happy. Um, yeah, so I'm glad I came, almost didn't. Uh, you know, was, was not looking forward to motor sailing for three days, which is about what I'm expecting. Get some wind tonight, and then probably nothing tomorrow, and nothing probably most of day three, according to the forecast. But we'll see, who knows. Um, motor, for, motor sailing for three days isn't uh, such a stiff price to pay for a uh, weather window all the way to Maine. So uh, anyway, so far so good, see you next time. So here's a bit of sailing action, day two. Now I get back to my roots, back to some hand steering, which is fun, gotta do it once in a while. Can't just let the hydro main steer all the time. Well, we're wrapping up day two. Daytime part of day two. Uh, it was hot today, hot and sunny, and uh, no wind for the second half of the day. Had some good sailing action in the, uh, I don't know, middle part of the day, just for a couple hours though. And uh, then, the, then the wind died, and then it came around to the front. And, uh, right now it's out in front of me, coming from the north. Just at, at uh, four knots though, some breeze. You can see behind me the moon is full. It'll be nice and bright this evening. Um, and uh, let's get a whole bunch of naps while the sun was getting low in the sky because it was just too sunny out here in the cockpit. The sun is it's just starting to go down. Uh, it definitely doesn't shave me at that point of the day. So I took a lot of naps in a row. And uh, I'm only making five knots right now. I don't know what's up. I think I've lost the Gulf Stream. Uh, I've got to find it again. Uh, I thought it would be so easy to just hop in it and go, but it's really, you know, the big picture is just a narrow little band of current. You can't see it. Uh, and it's kind of ambiguous where it is. So anyway, hopefully I'll find the Gulf Stream and get around Cape Hatteras before, before Monday night, because we should have uh, some strong wind Monday night. I mean, so it's a bit of a deal, but I'd like to get around Cape Hatteras before, before then. And in order to do that, I need to be one a little bit faster. But anyway. That's one of the best parts of sailing, shutting the engine off. Finally got some sails up, been motoring all night. Most of yesterday, a lot of the first day too. So this is day three, and uh, it's just been variable winds, mostly very light winds, usually too light to sail. Lots of sail changes, lots of work, lots of motoring. Uh, so I knew that was gonna be the first couple days of the trip. Uh, we should be getting some consistent wind tomorrow. Uh, and uh, if I'm lucky, this will be the beginning of it right here. 
here. For now, we're sailing and all is well. Good morning, it's day four, and it's a nice day. The wind's been blowing, so we're sailing, haven't had the engine on in maybe almost 24 hours now. Uh, going straight downwind, got the spinner for pull up. Working great. Uh, surprised I haven't had one until now. Uh, great thing to have, basic necessity, basically. Um, anyway, we're rounding Cape Hatteras, making about seven knots don't seem to have any Gulf Stream current. I haven't been in the Gulf Stream current in, in a day, a whole day now. I don't know where, where it went, but I'm not in it. Uh, regardless, we're making good time getting around Cape Hatteras. We'll be just at the north end of it when the strongest winds hit tonight. I'm going to be like 20 to 25, um, but with thunderstorms. So there could be strong gusts and nasty weather. Uh, so hopefully we'll be around uh, at least around the, the shoals, diamond shoals by then. I think we will, no problem. And then uh, we're going to have some north wind tomorrow, so I'm planning on cutting to the, the west once we're around Cape Hatteras. And that'll just ensure that I can sail on a close reach and north wind without being in the Gulf Stream. Uh, that's the plan. Don't really know where we'll stop. Might go all the way to Maine, might stop uh, somewhere before there, Massachusetts or on the Isle of Shoals, New Hampshire. It's a good place, place, place to stop, as you see. Just playing it by ear, just sailing. Mostly cloudy. A slight chance of showers and thunderstorms early. Then showers and thunderstorms likely this evening. A chance of showers and thunderstorms after midnight. Lows in the lower cities. Five. A lot of work last night, lots of uh, working up on the deck, it's 30 knots of wind. I had to take down the spinner pole last night and uh, put up the stay sail. Um, anyway, we made a lot of uh, distance yesterday though, we spent a lot of time going 10 knots. So it made a lot of distance, but then now the wind's out of the north and uh, so we're not really going in the right direction close. But much going east right now instead of northeast. So be it. Uh, day five, here we are. Good 
morning. It's day five. Uh, <clears throat> we're uh, sailing upwind now, and just uh, 11 to 14 knots. I'm going east, unfortunately. Um, the wind is north northeast. Uh, pretty intense night last night. Lots of thunder. Well, thunderstorms brought wind 25 to 30. I even saw 35, and that lasted all night. And the wind, and that was fine because we were going downwind. The current, we're going like 10 knots all night long, pretty much. But the wind veered, and for a while we were doing 10 knots east, which is not the direction I'm trying to go. But there wasn't much I could do about it uh, because the wind was so strong, and with the waves and all, I just didn't want to uh, try to sail upwind in that. <coughs> Also had the spinnaker pole out, so I ended up having to take the spinnaker pole down last night while the wind was blowing 30, uh, which was which was kind of was kind of intense. Uh, so I'm just now getting used to the spinnaker pole, just learning about it. And, uh, yeah, I, I was thrown right into the fire last night to have to take it down with strong wind at night, but it wasn't a big deal. I just furled the Genoa and took the pole down, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And put the stay sail up its place and uh, got onto a broad a beam reach and, and now with the wind is calmed down we're on a, a close reach and uh, there you have it that's what's going on today it's a nice day although pretty much as usual the hydro vein is steering I caught. Looks like I'll be eating fresh mahi for the next few days. I caught it on a hand line, which is my favorite way to fish. This is it right here. A flying fish landed on deck last night, so I hooked a flying fish to this. And I just put this out and put a bungee cord on the line so you know when something's on it. And then you just pull it in, and it's just amazing how simple it is. You just pull the fish right in, it's like nothing. Uh, it's funny how much harder it is to use a rod and reel to reel in one of these fish. I would have been fighting that sucker for a while. It would have tired me out. Um, you just pull it in with the hand line. It's, it's so simple. It's like we've all been tricked into thinking we need uh, expensive rod and reel to control with. You don't need a hand line. You just pull the fish in. It's simple. Well, it's turned into a fine day for sailing. The wind is very light, but we're moving along at five or six knots, probably because we've got Gulf Stream current with us, which not only moves us ahead, but brings the uh, current wind up another knot or two, which allows us to continue sailing in like seven knots of wind, which is almost, uh, which is difficult to do. Usually, it might not happen at all. So anyway, it's a nice day. Uh, it's great after all the, uh, the uh, strong winds and rain and uh, difficulty uh, last night and also this morning. This morning was windy and gray and the wind wasn't doing what it was supposed to do and we were heading to Europe instead of Canada. So it's uh, nice the way things are going right now. Well, I've learned a couple lessons. One of them is to service my wenches uh, instead of waiting until they malfunction to service them. So what's happened over there, it's the second winch that is able to spin backwards now. The stay sail halyard winch uh, is back spinning. Luckily though, it has uh, rope clutches in front of it, so it doesn't really matter. But that one, uh, I need to cleat the rope off behind it. The sheet, that's the stay sail sheet. I need to cleat the stay sail sheet off because that winch is spinning backwards. So uh, first thing I do when I get somewhere is uh, service my wenches, especially those two. That's how fast I'm going. 
11 knots, folks. I don't think I've ever gone that fast. It's been, it's been over 10 for hours now. That's the magic of the Gulf Stream. Oh, look at that. So yeah, in case you're wondering what I eat when I'm out here, it's one of my favorites. That's mahi-mahi that I caught uh, two days ago, or maybe it was yesterday. And, and there next to it, that cooked in a different pot, is collard greens from a can, Rotel tomatoes, and refried beans. So there you have it. That is today's lunch. I don't know if you can see that in the background, but that is cargo ship Evergreen. It says Evergreen on the side, but the AIS calls it Ever Fashion. So I guess they changed their name from Evergreen to Ever Fashion. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's the boat that blocks the Suez Canal. Evergreen, now Ever Fashion. How about that? Good morning. It's day seven. Calm morning, nice little sunrise behind some clouds. It's calm now, I'm gonna have strong wind later and rain, unfortunately. Uh, it's chilly. It's chilly, so I've got on my uh, bathrobe. It's nice because it wraps around my life jacket like that. Not very nautical, but uh, yeah, there's no one out here to see it but me. It's actually comfortable, warm. It's, it's chilly. I'll be in the uh, 50s right now. It's just very cold for me. It's wintertime, not my standards. Uh, anyway, heading towards uh, maybe Rockport, Massachusetts, uh, maybe Maine. We'll see. I don't have to decide until tomorrow, probably, where I'm going. And I'll just be watching the weather and letting that decide. I always do. All right. So yesterday was a uh, good wind most of the day. started off upwind, kind of bumpy, and then it was... Nice, easy beam reach and light wind for most of the day. Going like five knots, so it was real nice, easy sailing. And then we lost the wind in the early evening. And we've been motoring. Um, it's, it's peaceful. It's all right. All right. Talk to you later. Good morning, it's day seven. And it's, uh, yeah, as you can see, foggy, drizzling, very light wind between six and eight knots. We're moving along at about four. It's kind of, kind of beautiful out here. The wind has picked up now. This morning it was just glass, just sheet glass water. And uh, the fog is something new to me. It kind of makes the little part of the ocean I'm on seems smaller, like there might be land hiding behind it, and the, the horizon's closer. So it's, it's a whole different effect out here. Anyway, uh, motored all night, got lots of sleep, passed a couple of boats, but, but uh, it was just a pleasant taking a break from, uh, you know, there's no healing, no banging around, just smooth, smooth sailing, there's not much swell, so we weren't rolling yet last night. Um, what else is going on? <clears throat> oh, ran the heater for the first time. Ran the heater all night, the space heater. Uh, was happy that it worked. Kept uh, the inside a little bit warmer. And the wires didn't overheat. I checked all the connections. There's nothing overheated, so I'm happy with that. I can, I can run it. it does, doesn't use a lot of power, though. Um, so we'll see. Had the engine running the whole time. Had the engine running, but had the autopilot on. Space heater, uh, which is 360 watts. This, this is like what, 12, uh, 30, 30 amps? Yeah, I think it's 30 amps. Huge power draw. Anyway, that's it for day seven. So far, so good. And uh, that's not everything. So, what else? Uh, seven days of sleeping 20 minutes at a time, I feel fine. It's only the first couple of days that are rough. After, after a few days of it, you get used to it. So here we are on day seven and uh, perfectly comfortable and energetic. And 
No issues. All's well. See you next time. Good morning. It's day eight. And we are about 100 miles from Rockport, Massachusetts. I think that's where we're going to go. That sounds like a nice place. And uh, yeah, that's, that's where we're headed. It's cold, uh, but I'm dressed warmly. This, this uh, Mustang float jacket is super duper warm. And I got on these bibs, yellow pants. So I'm basically pretty comfortable right now. I think it's only like in the 50s. It's awfully cold to me, and the wind's blowing, and it's foggy. You know, I got and I got no like warm house to watch this. There's no snow hot shower to take. So uh, anyway, yesterday was pretty rough going around Nantucket Shoals. Uh, happened to be a, a low pressure system passing right over top of me as I was going around, and, uh, and all day yesterday was windy and rainy, and cold. But then going around the shoals. All of a sudden the wind picked up and then it just changed directions. Like all of a sudden it changed directions dramatically. I had two boats in the area too, so I was monitoring these two other boats, making sure we don't run into each other. So I had to tack. And then, then the wind died completely. And then it came back from a different direction, jumped right up to the 2025. Did that over and over again. Meanwhile, one of the boats around me is a sailboat. I guess they were reefing it. They kept turning around and they, they went past me pretty close, about two miles ahead of me. Close out uh, there on the ocean, and then they turned around and pointed right back at me, and they did that twice. So I guess they were—I guess they were probably reefing the sails because the weather got nasty. So for a couple hours, I was out in the rain, in the cold rain, steering the boat. You can't you know, when the wind shifts like that, autopilots aren't how any, any help. So you got to be out there, packing, adjusting the sails, changing course, standing out there in the rain, doing it, doing what you got to do. So uh, anyway, the wind kept dying and then coming back hard. So one time it died, I ran down and made a, a tea real quick. A hot cup of tea, wonderful. And then uh, back at it, 25 knots out of some new direction. And then another time it died, I went down and made a big bowl of chili. And I uh, scarfed that down as fast as I could. Uh, so yeah, one of the keys to staying warm out here is eating a lot. So I just eat whenever I think about food. I just eat, eat, eat. And, uh, and I did that for a couple of months before coming out here too. But, actually put on about 15 pounds in hopes that would help you stay warm. Um, anyway, the cold is not as big a, a threat as I thought it would be. Um, yeah, when I say cold, I'm talking like 50. Uh, but 50 in the wind, in the rain, with no relief, it's, it's pretty chilly. But uh, dressed properly, it's not such a big deal. Anyway, uh, it's been an exciting and fun trip, and it's going to come to an end probably tomorrow morning at Rockport, Massachusetts. Uh, I chose Rockport just by scanning the coast, looking at, looking at the chart on Navionics, and uh, looking for anchorages. I'm always looking for anchorages, just to have lots of options. And I uh, found Rockport, and someone said it was a fairy tale looking little town, and uh, described it really nicely. And I thought, well, that sounds, that sounds like a good place to, to uh, end my journey, or end this, you know, which is really the beginning of my journey to Canada, and I'll probably all the way around the Atlantic. So, anyway, Hope to be there tomorrow morning, 100 miles away. From a very light wind. We're gonna sail at four knots for the next 100 miles. Just slow, easy, mellow cruising. The fog, unfortunately, it's foggy, so it's hard to see at night. Can't see uh, very well at all, so it's a little, it's a little uh, nerve-wracking. Uh, luckily, I've got radar. There's lots of fishing boats out here. I mean, when the radar picks them up, it lets me know. So it's all good. All right. Until next time. So after checking the weather, I decided to run for Cape Cod. It's going to be uh, heavy rain tonight, strong winds, and I just don't want to deal with that. I passed about 10 fishing boats last night, and uh, in the fog, you can only see them about two miles away. You gotta be up. You gotta be up and out uh, watching that. I just do not want to spend all night in freezing cold rain tonight and heavy wind. Uh, yeah, I experienced that yesterday and I don't want to experience that at night, especially with a bunch of fishing boats around. So, keep cod. 
uh, has a nice little hook at the end of it. And we're going to anchor in that cove, have protection from the south southeast winds coming tonight. And uh, get to stay inside and relatively warm and dry instead. So that's what's happening. We're running for Cape Cod. Hope to be there around 5 p.m. Uh, it is about 6 or 7 a.m. right now. And that's what's going on this day, which I think is either day 7 or day 8. I lost count. I think it's day 7. Alright, until next time. day nine and I am enjoying a stand-up breakfast. I'm afraid of eating while standing because it's raining and I didn't want to eat in the rain. Since the wind's behind me it's safe right here. So that's what's going on. Oatmeal, coffee. Last day we're only about 20 miles from the coast of Maine and I'm gonna go up into uh, Cahog Inlet to Snow Island. Probably mispronounced Cahog. Maybe it's Quahog. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. Uh, it was cold, 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 and more cold last night. Uh, we were going downwind all night, uh, and I'll get back to you after I finish my oatmeal. I don't want to go cold. Cold oatmeal is no good. Yeah, I forgot to mention one other thing I'm wearing, and that's my, my harness. Uh, I usually wear a Spinlock deck vest, but um, it got wet, so I broke out the harness. Um, sailing solo, you gotta be you gotta be hooked to your boat. So I've got uh, one long tether. I can hook it to uh, the jack line. Jack, the jack lines run all the way to the bow. They're on both sides of the boat. I've also got these points right here. Right there in the companion way so I can clip in. And uh, we've also got a, sh a short tether. This is a short one. And then this is what attaches it to the harness. Um, yeah, guys, stay clipped to the boat and you can't fall in so uh the float jacket will keep me floating even though i'm not wearing my life jacket but uh fall in the end of the water out here in cold water you're gonna be hypothermic within uh, i don't know a half hour you're, you're gonna go quick you're gonna go faster than you're gonna get rested that's for sure so it's much more important to stay on the boat than it is to stay floating once you fall in you cannot fall in it's like falling off a cliff when i move around the boat I, I act like I'm a, a rock climber. I clip. I use two tethers. I clip a tether to the uh, jack line. Usually, just when I'm in the cockpit, I'm already clipped into the jack line. And then when I move forward, if I have to unclip one, I'll clip the other one to something first, then unclip. Just like I would if I was traversing a wall rock climbing. Not that I'm a rock climber, uh, but it's what I imagine I'm going. So falling off the boat is, is a long, slow death. That's the reality of it. Got to stay attached to the boat. Very important. All right, that's it. Peace out. We have reached Maine. I'm in the Cahog Inlet right now. I can finally see a little bit. It's so foggy, it's hard to see. Black traps everywhere. Yeah, a lot going on here. Well, after nine days of sailing, 
I made it to Maine. Here we are. The hook is dropped and uh, I'm gonna take a nap. Sailing to Newfoundland is the book that I wrote about this adventure, and it is available at Amazon as an ebook, a paperback, or a hardback. So check it out.